2018 marks Rory McIlroy's 10th year on tour. To celebrate the Northern Irishman's impressive decade, we've been speaking to some of the game's leading journalists and commentators about Rory's rise to the top of the men's game. I knew his reputation, uh, I suppose what other people knew, that he was this amazingly talented amateur. I remember seeing him for the first time when he was uh, invited to play or to come along and hit balls in the range and just to experience the British Masters at Forest of Arden. Even at that stage you could see that he was you know, a pure ball striker. But I've seen so many amateurs, talented amateurs, come and go and not quite make it into the professional ranks or not quite have great success. So he kind of said, well, yeah, he's good, but you know, let's see. And then, of course, we, we did see it was a pretty quick rise after that. Sensational talent. He had an old head on young shoulders. It was, it was freakish to watch the way that he brought in these seasoned veterans from the corners of the course with the, their tails between their legs. He was different, and uh, it has remained so. You know, there were expectations, you know, that for what we considered to be our, our Mozart. You know, he was Ireland's Mozart. Uh, you know, in golfing terms. So, you know, the hopes were always very high, but he, he didn't quite get the win as quickly as maybe some expected. But he did manage to do it in 2009, and it kind of just was a relief, I think, to finally get that out of the way. And then he could concentrate on, um, you know, just scaling the heights. And he became an elite player very quickly. He was in the world's top 10 as a teenager. <laughs> It was a mindset thing, it proved to him he could win in that company. Because I think no matter what you do in the amateur ranks, no matter how good people say you are, and Rory would have heard that for years and years and years, until you win in a professional tournament, you don't quite know yourself whether you're going to fulfil what potential you have, because so many people you know, have been star amateurs and not got to that level. By 2010, Rory had earned a place in the European Ryder Cup team and has featured in every edition since. He was still looking for that first major though, and his first real chance came at the 2011 Masters. He just was in a different class, and everything was working, and the putts were dropping, and he wasn't under any pressure. He played very unencumbered golf. It was just a, a beautiful, joyous thing to behold. But he woke up on the wrong side of the bed on Sunday morning. And you know, when he, when he pull hooked that drive off the 10th tee and then was scrambling around, I can only imagine what was going through his head and that of his caddy as they tried to kind of just make sense of you know, this whole situation. It was an impossible position really. And you know, it, um, it did him in, but he had time as everything just fell to pieces to kind of gather his thoughts and handle himself brilliantly when he came off the course. You know, the dream was over for that particular tournament, that championship, that major that he wanted. Um, but then, like Lazarus, he was resurrecting 70 days later and winning his first major at the US Open in sensational style. So that points to a rare talent. I think having that in the bank, he would always feel comfortable that it could be done again. And the winning majors, I think when people who talk about winning majors, and I think he listened to Harrington in this, is actually when he first won a major, he thought, actually that wasn't, it didn't take anything special. It was, it was no more different than winning a, you know, another tournament. And to McElroy, it's, it's, it's not really. And that, that run he went on, as you say, the consistency in the majors. So, um, yeah, I think it probably did just cement his, his belief that, that winning majors, winning multiple majors, which is what makes a great player, could be done. After winning his first PGA Championship at Kiowa Island in 2012, McElroy's next major triumph would come closer to home at the 2014 Open Championship. From the start of that tournament, the Hoyle really just seemed the guy that was going to you know, be in control of the tournament, and he didn't waver at all. Um, I think the closing, when you look back, the closing few holes on the Sunday looked a little bit anxious perhaps, but it wasn't really. He was always pretty comfortable, and then of course the scene at the end where his mother, who hadn't seen him win a major before, was waiting at the 18th Dune and it was an emotional scene as he you know, hugged her. And um, again, really was emotional about that because of the significance of his mother being at the tournament. I think in 2014, everybody thought, or most people thought, that, that he could be, if not quite another Tiger, because that's a, you know, almost an impossible comparison for, for any player, that he could be going for double digits majors. So that's why since then it's been a bit of a, a bit of a shock that it's stopped. 
We haven't seen enough of that control and that absolutely spellbinding confidence that he displays when he is on and the blinkers are on and the putts are dropping. You know, so many people, you know, have um, different skills, but he's got an outstanding explosive skill off the tee. And when he drives it superbly well and hits those greens in regulation, when he can actually convert the putts, it becomes very easy for him. It looks easy, it's a joy to watch. And, you know, there are those pur purple patches when he does it, um, but they've been rather sparse, you know, in recent years. And then you've had injuries, you've had legal disputes, you've had distractions. Um, 2018 is going to be a massive year for him. I think he can achieve more because of the break he had at the end of 2017 leading into to this year. I think he's pressed the reset button in his career. He's looked back at what he's done and, and taken it as a line in the sand and said, OK, let's look at the next 10 years as a, as a fresh start where he could achieve even more than the previous 10 years. I think we're now into a separate segment of his career. You know, we're building up to it now and it could be the perfect crescendo. He's going to play more tournaments. Um, you know, there are some very, very confident youngsters out there and Spieth is always a danger man. Dustin Johnson, who knows what to expect from him at Augusta this year. You know, he's going to be a massive threat because he's world number one and if he can avoid falling down at his house, you know, he should be um, one of the favourites. But, but Rory has got the ability to do it. He knows he does. He just needs to convert on the greens. You know, he's had the green jacket of Ireland, you know, since he was a boy international into a senior amateur international. But this is the green jacket that he really wants.